designer as me. Um, I mean, as you can see, I, I do pixel art as well. I had a pink hair maybe two months ago, so it's me, pixel. Uh, I want to show you a, a phrase, a book, or somebody. Video games are bad for you. That's what they say about rock and roll. Do you know who is the author of this book? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so 25 years ago, I was in science class, uh, sitting in and drawing uh, pixel character, maybe my first uh, pixel character. And uh, someone was behind me, and she uh, snatched uh, my piece of paper and said, Susanna, you are not going uh, to make a living with that. So uh, I, I thought that uh, sometimes when something is new, it's difficult to understand uh, on the people. So imagine 25 years ago, games, the school is not good, <laughs> drawing Mario characters or Zelda characters, I can't remember how many times. <laughs> so imagine it's difficult to understand that the uh, game design is a joke. That's what I love. Do you know the reference? Uh, yeah? Let me raise your hand and you can stop me when you want. Uh, I love movies, I love um, video games, The Link to the Past is like my favorite game. I love cartoons, uh, Adventure Time, Gumball. So imagine, I'm perfect for game, you know, game industry. Uh, because I think in our company, maybe with all these loves and likes, they didn't contrast me. <laughs> so I work, uh, worked in, in game industry for 12 years. I started uh, working in Pilo Mobile. Maybe you know, it was Commandos. You remember Commandos? So I started working in uh, Java games for three old mobiles. Now I have like a piece of vintage uh, mobiles. And uh, all these games we, we did in three months. So uh, it was super, uh, the development was super fast, but it was super good for like a, a beginning for me. After that, I work uh, in Paris and Cobollo, no Cobollo, Cobollo, <laughs> a French company for Facebook and uh, and mobiles, and we start working uh, with iPad, iPad, iPhone, you know, the yeah, iOS games. After that, I work in Pyro as well with Planet 51. I don't know, if I know the movie. Um, an animation movie, the tunes, and up for kids, and MMO of the uh, basketball, basketball. And finally, uh, I'm currently working, working a team, uh, yes, I think, in between Sweden and Spain. And basically, I work in puzzle games, mostly puzzles. And Really uh, different from you know from PC or mobile games. I work work at that. So when I started uh, working at games, I thought uh, that mm, okay, I want to be artist. I want to be game designer. I don't know uh, what will be my 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 role in game industry. So I, I studied uh, advertising in Madrid, in the university, and I started uh, working in uh, artists, like an artist, like graphic designer. So I thought that maybe the art was perfect for me, but I realized that there's a lot of, of artists, maybe artists, movie artists, pixel artists, and I didn't have the, the level to reach this kind of art super amazing. So I started working as a game designer. I did a master. 
So I decided to give the designer a uh, I don't know if you know, there is, there's a lot of job roles in the industry. It's not only game design, developers, artists, backend, marketing. Do you know what is a marketing guy or what they do usually in the game industry? Yeah, the backend. The uh, is the programmer that is in charge of um, the servers, you know, the, the backend and the front end. The IT, you know what is IT? Yeah, information technology, right? <coughs> Basically, um, they, they are the IT guys. Mm, they want to. Uh, <laughs> they solve you any problem you have with your computer, you know? So, the, the IT guys. But there's more people in big companies. Scrum masters, data scientists. Of course, uh, human resources, localization guys, as Javi, I think Javi is for localization, no? Okay. Customer service, business, performance, musicians, and many, many, many more. In, in King, actual, uh, currently in, in Barcelona, we are six. Yes, 600. So we are Uh, a game designer, you can be more than a game designer. In a small company, uh, usually you can work as game designer, generalist game designer. So you, you have to do everything, uh, from mechanics, functionalities, text, everything. But in big companies, uh, there is uh, a specialization. Now, in, in Kien or in other companies like Social Coin or whatever, uh, there, there's a lot of level designers because uh, we used to have uh, games that update every 15 days or one month, and we need uh, people that create levels. And narrative designers in terms of the narrative of the game. Uh, they used to work at the beginning of the project and after that, not too much. And the game designer is in charge of everything uh, at the beginning as well. Um, the mechanics, uh, it's like defining all the game design of the game. And the lead designer is in charge, is supposed to be <laughs> like a teacher for, uh, for the game designers level and narrative designers and, and a guy. Uh, that is super interesting because um, a lot of people think that uh, working games is very fun and, and it is. <laughs> but uh, you have to know um, some methodologies and framework to work on it. Because uh, it's, it's, it's really similar uh, when you study in the university or in the school, you need uh, like a methodology to study. Working game is the same. So, in my experience, I work in different companies, but essentially, uh, there's two uh, systems of uh, frameworks the waterfall system, like the uh, waterfall is, is the system that um, is normally used when a company is really new. Um, and it, uh, it's based on, uh, imagine I, I took an example, um, you want to create a game and you have an idea, you, you will make the design document, you have a programmer to program the, or to make the code and you will test the, the app to research. Uh, if you don't have time, maybe you, got, you will cook here because you don't have time to test. So it's really a, a super structured uh, system and there is no space for changes. There is no, no, time, no time for testing from the beginning. So it's super risky and super dangerous. So the agile is a framework, uh, as you can see, um, 
are really, really more flexible because we plan, we design, we build, we test, we review, and we launch a bunch of tasks, but not everything. Uh, every 15 days or the month or whatever we want. And we have, uh, we have the time to change uh, what we are designing or building, and we have the time to te test from the beginning. So it's, it's really, it's really good. There's a lot of companies that use Agile, like uh, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and, and it's really useful to work. You can see uh, these words, super essential for you, are uh, frameworks. All are Agile. Scrum is the most common and super used uh, in a lot of companies. Big companies, the Lean, the Kanban, the Stalin, still programming. That. that I want to explain you this class. I want to give you a video. Complex projects can lead to real headaches. Organizing the team, changes in scope, roles that aren't clear. But you can change that with Scrum, an agile framework. At its foundation, Scrum can be applied to any project or product development effort. Here's how it works. A product owner creates the product backlog, a prioritized wish list. During sprint planning, the team pulls a chunk from the top of that list and decides how to complete it. The team has a set time frame, the sprint, to complete their work. They meet in a daily scrum to keep the work moving forward. Along the way, the Scrum Master keeps the team focused. At the end of the sprint, the work should be potentially shippable. The team conducts a sprint review on the product and a retrospective on the process. Then, they choose the next chunk of the backlog and the cycle repeats. With Scrum, you can ensure the most valuable work has been completed time the project ends. Tackle your projects with Scrum. In selling a scrum, <laughs> but this is really a, an amazing work. This is more or less the, like a simplified <coughs> scrum. You have the product backlog, when you have all the features you want to make in the, in the game, and you pick maybe 10. You plan. In every every day, you are talking with your uh, workmates. Uh, no, uh, today I'm going I'm going to solve this problem, and uh, yesterday I did blah blah blah. So the communication and everything is you know is lively. Uh, every 15 days we have a demo, uh, so we can show uh, what we did in this spring. And the retrospective is to know that. It, if everything is all, all right, or we have to change something. So it's super good because every 15 days or every time you choose, uh, you have to, you can change. And it's super good for customers or clients, for example, when you have a client, not only in a uh, client scheme, but <laughs> in, you know, in small companies, maybe you have a client that uh, needs an app, and every 15 days the client can see the demo and they decide, okay, I think this, this was, a bad, was a, bad, a bad idea. Maybe I change this. So you can see it. And it's not a, a disaster like in Waterfall. In Waterfall, you are waiting for the demo until the end. So it's, it's, a, it's a disaster sometimes. Do you understand? Do you have any questions? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I Maybe sometimes uh, month, sometimes uh, it is easy. If you are doing like a, another game in my case, in, in King, for example, we made uh, passes. So we can test uh, with uh, you know, the mechanics because we have uh, games 
very similar. So we can tweak out a bit, and, but sometimes when you have some, something playable, you, you can have something playable from the beginning, from 15 days. You can have maybe um, a 3D uh, environment and a uh, character. I, I, when I was uh, working, when I was working in in Bilbao, for example, we usually pay three months. But imagine the mobiles have 25 uh, megas of memory. <laughs> so imagine the, the games. So it was super, super focusing games, super with uh, low, low. Geographics and. Do you want to say something? <laughs> because I'm confused. <laughs> Listening voices. Uh, that, uh, it's difficult. Uh, I think, for example, uh, I am working actually in a, in, in a work and we work for two years. And we have something valuable for the beginning because it's like a skin, some kind. But uh, you can have something. Uh, that's, this is a really good question because in the demo, some, someone asked me, uh, "What? What is uh, the demo? Uh, what uh, mm, you will show? Something? Something real? Something playable? Something achievable? Yes, you have to show something achievable." Not suitable to release, but suitable to uh, to know uh, how it works. For example, if you have a game that the character has uh, to play, uh, to jump, uh, you have to show this. So yeah, it's suitable and you can play. But at the end, it depends on the game, it depends on the company. Maybe you have, a, from a client, I had a project uh, maybe two years ago, an app for kids. And they told me that they need the app uh, for a specific day. So what I did is, uh, okay, uh, I have five months. So in five months, what can I do? So with Scrum, you have, whoa, all the tasks you have to do, you have to do and say, okay, this is not uh, possible in, in five month, months, so I have to do this. Do you like it or no? Okay, but okay, I want to uh, an app store inside the app. It's not possible because it's two more months. Okay, so that is the zero that I I will you know I I show you in the demo. So it depends. I don't know how to answer. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 So that's what happened when, in my experience, in the first company I worked in Scrum was Peter Sweden, and more or less, it was similar. No, we could have withdrawn your application before any of this happened. This is exactly why we would have clear lines of communication. I know, Jared, I know. Listen, I'd like to institute an organizational system called Scrum. Scrum is designed to... Right, one hour go. No. Monster. Uh, what's going on? Joe Paul bet me a hundred bucks that if I touched one object in this room, he could find it just by okay. uh, Not now, please. Well, it has to be now. I just masturbated to hide my focus. I have a 15 minute refractory period. Uh, well, we have a lot of work to get done, so maybe we should do that instead. Dude, relax, okay? We each went through a full module this morning. We're just taking a little break. DRM is now a thing of beauty. Wait. You did DRM? Yeah. I did DRM. Why did you do DRM? I said I would do DRM, you would do error handling. Anything to do with errors sounds like your whole vibe. Yeah, I handle errors Scrum? every day. Yes, Scrum. Scrum. <laughs> so, from rules based filtering for your workflow, at which point that card is moved from the ice box into the in progress column, and it stays there until it is ready for testing. Okay, this increases visibility into our team's progress. And that, gentlemen, is Scrum. Welcome to the next eight weeks of our lives. This just became a job. Okay, 
So here are the cards I'm adding under this epic for the ingestion dimension. And there are three stories here. How long do we think each one will take? I don't know, who cares? Four hours apiece? Yeah, maybe for you. Each one of those tasks would take me three max. Not tasks, stories. I've got a story, why don't you choke on my balls? Well, how about this? Why don't you each take one story, right? Okay. And we'll see who's right. You see what he's doing, right? He's trying to get us to compete so we work faster. He thinks this wall of psych 101 MBA mind control bullshit is going to motivate us. Fine, don't compete to them at whatever speed you like. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, I know these guys. I really don't think Scrum is going to work for them. Oh, come on, just trust in the system. So we're going to work at a nice leisurely pace, right? Sure. But why are you tapping faster? I'm not. Maybe my leisurely pace is just a little faster than yours. Oh, cocksucker. Huh. Oh, booyah. <laughs> Guys? So, it was like somebody when a scrum appeared in the middle was like that. Like, you hey, what are you doing? You are controlling us. No, we are not controlling you. Okay, okay. But finally, it was really, really good. So, I, I moved to my park. Uh, I'm designing mastery puzzles in a team, so I want to show you what is ever designed. Layout, a safe, and in, in where place the elements. 
this is Alever, I did in Stockholm, it's called Dr. Case. And in this, in this level, you can see a lot of elements, but you can see a, a, really a difference between that and this one, uh, the colors. Uh, one uh, to have more dif difficulty in the, um, in the level is super easy. It's, if you have more color, it's more difficult to match. It's really logical thing. Another thing is the moves. Uh, that uh, the puzzle and mastery games are not based on time. We have to limit some way. So, some, so the limit is the, the moves. If you have more moves, you have more possibilities to match everything. If you have less, less possibilities you have. So it's more difficult. And another thing is the spawners. Do you know what is a spawner? Nobody? Yeah, yes, is that. It's correct. Is that. Here in Danica Soda, it's really good because uh, they show the spawners. But in a lot of levels, but, uh, they don't show the, the spawners. So you can see why it's falling. No? Falling liquorized. Here he says, he's candy. Here candy. I saw that. The blockers and the power ups. You know what is a blocker? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you block your game, uh, stop your play, and because you, you can move or you can. Okay. I here you have an example of a lot of blockers in Carita Soda. It's a blocker, you have to match uh, five times in order to disappear. This element is liquorized, it's a movable obstacle. So it moves. This is an air that is fixed uh, on the candy. And this is uh, really interesting because it's a blocker as well, and it's a dummy. That is a blocker. But it's a rewarding blocker. That is a really interesting concept because. Um, uh, sometimes we thought that the blocker, blocker is super bad, but in this case, when you match seven times, you will have a really big explosion, so it's not worth at the end. And it's super good for players. Uh, uh, it's like avoiding the frustration sometimes in super hard levels, we have to add these kind of elements. And the power-ups are these <coughs> This element that are super cool and explodes everything. Uh, in Carita Sola, for example, we have a lot of power ups. We have uh, exploding candies, we have horizontal exploding candies, the super famous color bomb, uh, the big piece that release a lot of pieces. I don't know if you know Carita Sola, but it's super fun. And when you finally finalize all the elements in the, uh, on the board, you have to test and play a lot, a lot your your level in order to get uh, the score and the stars. In 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 King, <laughs> we used to uh, put a one star in uh, maybe. You know, if you win the level, you have one star at least. The, you will have two stars if you're doing really, really good, and three stars if you are doing amazing. So it depends on how you can see a playable level. And so finally, it will be that way. Okay. Okay. Uh, in Kien and in a lot of companies that uh, work on in puzzles, in puzzles <laughs> uh, we used to have the Saga Map progression. It's, it's really a super old concept, but uh, it's a way to show the player how it progresses. That's so simple. And that's why uh, it 
you can see there's a lot of leather actually in Tamil grass. They have well, like 4,000 levels. Uh, it's crazy. So we need a lot of uh, level designers in this company. So level design is a really important work. It's not so easy. And uh, for having really good levels, the, um, it's not important to uh, make it impossible. It's to make it fun. And this is a curve of difficulty. Do you have any questions? <laughs> we can go for the questions after the break. Yeah? Okay. Uh, so. <laughs> so after 25 years of uh, um, of this class I, I showed you at the beginning, I thought that you always have to follow your path and your passion. So that is my advice. 